Shalom, wa baraka, Miss Paka, peace and blessings, family. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that's going to come to this planet very soon and some things that has already happened. And let's talk about some prophecies that will be fulfilled, that y'all will change the earth forever. Some things that we should not really be looking forward to and some things that we should be looking forward to. A lot of us thought that in 2019, we would be saved out of the land of our captivities. However, that was false because that scripture in Genesis that was used to say that 2019 would be the fulfilling of the 400 year prophecy. That scripture was talking about Egypt. OK, um, we went into Egypt for 400 years and served. And when we left, we came out with great wealth. So. But let's let's build up upon some of the things. Well, pretty much all the major things that will happen really soon. And we're going to see how the prophecies are all a domino effect. Scripture tells us what's going to happen, but it's out of order. I'm going to try my very best to put it in order so we can have an understanding of what to expect and prepare for this. Now, this is a past prophecy in verse 24. And ship shall come from the coast of Chittim and shall afflict Ashur and shall afflict Eber. And he also shall perish forever. So it says ship shall come from the coast of Chittim. We know what Chittim is. Chittim is a Japhethite nation. Chittim. Chittim is the father of Javan. Javan is the father of the Greeks and Roman Empire. The Roman Empire spread west until they got to Spain. Now, Spain came to the Americas and conquered the people of the Americas. Now, those ships originally went to the Caribbean, but it, uh, eventually made their way north into Florida. Like, like when we're talking about Hernando de Soto, where did he go? To Florida. This was the original land of Assyria. He was a Spaniard. He is a Chittimite, and he afflicted Ashur. These people afflicted Ashur. They afflicted Assyria, and and not only did they do harm to Assyria, definitely not. It says, and he shall afflict Eber. Eber is the father of the Hebrews. That 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 means Israelites, and he shall perish forever. This he is the Israelites. Eber the Hebrews shall perish forever. This not. This is not a physical parish. This is a spiritual parish. Because when these heathens came against us, they made us perish. They, they killed our spirituality. They subdued every bit of spiritual being in our bodies. That we may worship their gods and do their ways. Okay, the book of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto his hand, even unto the time and times and the dividing of times. Great words to think about. So who's the he here in the scripture? The he, of course, is the white man. These people that the Most High will send against us to punish us. In this last captivity. It says he will speak great words against the Most High. How are some ways that this white man spake against the Most High? Obviously in the authorization of the New Testament. Forcing that on millions of people around the world. Telling these people that this is their God. Okay. Changing doctrines. Even within the Torah. Changing doctrines throughout the Tanakh. Telling people they can eat pork, shrimp, crawfish, anything under the heaven. That's some ways, that's just some examples of how they spoke great words against the Most High. And it says, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. What are some ways this white man wore out the saints? Who are the saints? The saints are the children of Israel. How are some how are some ways that this white man wore out the children of Israel? Many ways. First of all, the the conquering of us. 
the slavery of us, war against us, everything from slavery to sharecropping to hanging us in the fields to killing us in front of our families to raping our women from A to Z, many ways they wore us out. And it says, and to think to change times and laws. How did the white man think to change times and laws? How did these European invaders to the Americas, these people from the, the ships of Chittim, think to change times and laws? How did the Roman Empire, let's start with the Roman Empire, these people... How did they change times and laws? Let's start with times. They changed the Sabbath. They changed when the month begins. They changed when the year begins. They made people worship the sun by calling one day Sunday. They made people worship the moon by call the next day Monday. Their god Saturn was honored on a Saturday. That's some examples of how they changed the times. You know, they got you thinking the new year begins in the middle of the winter time. When it actually begins in spring. Now, how did they change laws? Which laws are they talking about? How did they change the Torah? How did they change the laws given in Torah? How did they affect what went into the minds of the people when it came to Torah? They'll, to this day, they'll tell you what you can and what you cannot do. To this day, They'll, they try to make a society where Torah is not even in our minds whatsoever. Pope Alexander V had a son named Caesar Borgia. I mean, these are people who are supposed to be, you know, devoted religious leaders of the Roman Empire. He had a son named Caesar Borgia who not only was homosexual, but had incestual sex with his sister and millions of people around the world worship this man to this day. That's just a few examples. Prophecy. Now this prophecy has already been fulfilled. <clears throat> Look at the next part of this verse. It says, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and a time and a dividing of a time. What if these times are indeed a thousand years each? So it said, the power will be given into his hand in a time, a time and a dividing of a time. That's a that's two thousand years plus some. That's exactly how how many years the Roman Empire has been afflicting this earth. Um, the Roman Empire was started in twenty seven. BC ruled for about 500 years then the Moors took on when the Moors ended in 1491 white people have been ruling again for another 529 years into this day um, so yeah we got a few more years I don't even expect more than 10 years uh, until the end of this captivity but I could be wrong so don't take me just saying this captivity is going to end 10 years from now I could be wrong but yeah, it says a time of time and the dividing of times. That time specifically, I believe, is a thousand years each. Now, Daniel 12 and 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So this is during this captivity. Right after these people decide to change the times to change the laws and to wear out the saints of the Most High, knowledge will be increased. You see, even to this day, this is a present day prophecy. This is something that's happening right now. Knowledge is the biggest industry in the world right now. 
without knowledge, this world would be completely different. The reason I'm making this video is because of this knowledge. The reason I've been able to um, put out any of the migration series is because knowledge has been increased. I can simply get on Google Maps and look at something on Earth thousands of miles away from my home that I've never been to nor will I ever go in my life. Because we have this knowledge. We have the internet, we have social media, all kinds of truths are so easy and it's at our fingertips because this knowledge has been increased. And there's a reason why this knowledge has been increased. The Most High knew exactly what he's doing. Because this captivity will be the most strange captivity the Israelites have ever been. We're literally scattered throughout the planet and the only way feasible that all these people scattered around the planet can come back together and gather like we're supposed to is only if knowledge is increased and we all have a touch have a have a certain way to be in touch and to come in touch and to come together in some point of the future <clears throat> in the past in that day that the remnant of Israel and such that are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more stay again upon him that smote him, but shall stay upon Yah, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though my people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. So the Most High tells us that Israel will return unto him. They'll return unto him. You can read this uh, and you can read a more uh, in-depth, in-detail scripture in Ezekiel 37. You can read about Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones. How Israel started off as dead bones and came together and grew flesh and stood on their feet like a great army. This prophecy is happening now. As you can see, we have been rising up. We have been coming into the truth. We are now starting to keep his laws. We're now starting to keep in touch with each other. And we're starting to stand up like this army. We're actually starting to do this stuff. A hundred years ago, it wasn't like this. Two hundred years ago, it was definitely not like this. Two hundred years ago, our ancestors in the field wouldn't even imagine us, their children and their children's children, coming back to their God in a very blessed manner as we are today. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 47, And say to the forest of the south, Hear the word of Yah. Thus saith Yah Elohim, Behold, I will kindle a fire in thee, and it shall devour every green tree in thee, and every dry tree. The flaming flame shall not be quenched. All the faces from the south even to the north shall be burned therein. This is something that's happening today. Over the years, we've seen an exponential end increased of fires earthquakes hurricanes volcanic eruptions natural disasters right but specifically fires especially in the south just like scripture said the forests of the south which forests of the south we got brazil you know and the amazon rainforest is being burned to the ground we have Africa, we have Central Africa, the Congo rainforest is being burned to the ground. And we have the bushlands of Australia being burned to the ground. The fires of the south. That's all the fires of the south. All this is prophecy being fulfilled. It said the flame shall not be quenched in all the faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein so that's this scripture saying these fires are not going to just be in the south 
eventually they'll be in the north they're going to work their way up the book of amos chapter 5 and verse 3 for thus saith yah elohim the city that went out by a thousand shall leave an hundred and that which went forth by an hundred shall leave ten to the house of israel for thus saith yah unto the house of israel seek ye me and you will live what is the most high saying He's saying a remnant of us shall come out out of the mass of us. He's saying the minority of us shall come out from the majority of us. And then the Most High goes on to add, Seek me, and ye shall live. Why is he saying we shall live if we seek him? Why are we leaving our cities? That's the big question. Why are we leaving our cities? Simply because right there it says, seek, seek him. It says, seek ye me and ye shall live. This is because Israel knows something's going to happen. Something catastrophic is going to come to the cities and they're leaving the cities. They're leaving the cities because they're seeking the most high. Not only are we supposed to seek him, but Proverbs 8 and 17 says, this is most high speaking. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me we're supposed to seek the most high early not wait to the last minute when everything goes crazy when this captivity comes to a catastrophic end then seek the most high we're supposed to be seeking him now and what the most high says in hosea 5 and 15 really breaks it all down I will go and return to my place. So the Most High will go and separate himself from the children of Israel until they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. They will seek me early. They will seek him early. So it says the Most High will separate himself from us until we acknowledge our offense, until we admit that we've done wrong, we admit that we've sinned, we admit that we broke the covenant with our ancestral father and seek his face. Try to get right with the Most High. In their affliction, in this captivity, they will seek me early. When we are in the midst of our pain and suffering, we're going to say, screw this. We're not going to deal with this anymore. We're going to seek the Most High. We're going to seek Him early. For thus saith Yah Elohim, the city which went out by a thousand shall leave an hundred, and that which went out forth by a hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. For thus saith Yah unto the house of Israel, seek ye me, and ye shall live. The Most High is telling us, once you leave the land of your captivity, when you leave these cities, because the cities is what's going to get hit in this captivity. Going to hit with the most high. It's going to get hit with the most high's plagues. When you leave these cities, we will live. This is Israelites separating themselves from captivity, separating themselves from Babylon, separating themselves from Assyria, separating themselves from, from Egypt, going to a little holy place, Goshen. To just live righteously like they're supposed to. That's what I'm going to do in just a few years. Me and several other Israelites saving their money for this land. About to go to Goshen. In Arizona. Off grid. Not a part of this captivity. Not a part of this United States federal crap that, that y'all live on. That we live on today. I'm going to go on to live somewhere where it's just me and the Most High. Not have to worry about the man, quote unquote. Don't have to live by the standards that he put on us. Because if you notice, it's extremely hard to keep the commandments in his captivity. So now, this this prophecy here is, will be fulfilled very soon. Israelites are going to say, screw this, we're leaving captivity. We're going to go to a little area and we're just going to keep the commandments. 
But this is very different from the Most High gathering us. Don't think, don't think we're just being gathered by the Most High. We're just choosing. We will choose to separate ourselves from Babylon. We will choose to separate ourselves from confusion. For Yah Elohim of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. What is a consumption? Consumption in Hebrew, boom, a disease, an illness shall spread determined in the midst of all the land. Determined means it's going to happen. There will be a disease. I'm not saying it's going to be the coronavirus or any of this other stuff, but there will be a disease before Jacob's trouble. There will be a disease before the Most High's wrath. There will be a disease and it's going to spread throughout the earth. Just know that. Mankind will not have a cure for it. The only cure for this disease is fire. But before any major destruction can happen, the Most High has to send Elijah the prophet back to the earth. Elijah will come back to this land. And he will turn Israel back to the Most High. Malachi 4 and verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yah. And he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I smite the earth with a curse. The Most High is going to send Elijah the prophet back. It says to turn the heart of the father to the children, the heart of the children to the fathers. The word fathers here. It's just uh, uh, as in father. I will turn the father back to the children. Ben, Ben Yisrael, the children of Israel. He will turn the Most High back to Israel and Israel back to the Most High. A lot of Israel is already awoken, but not enough of us are, are all the way awoken. And the Most High is going to send Elijah the prophet back, and he's going to get all kinds of media attention. He's going to get all kinds of worldwide, international attention. He is going to be uh, the spokesman for the children of Israel, and he will be so powerful that the heathen will hearken unto him. He will be so powerful that the Gentiles, even Gentiles, are going to start turning to the Most High. That's how powerful Elijah the prophet will be when he comes back to the earth. And the Most High wouldn't pick a better time to do so than a time where knowledge is increased upon the earth, when internet and media is prevalent in this society. Because if it was a thousand years ago, and Israel was scattered all over the planet, and there was no internet or no media, and most high sins Elijah. How is Elijah going to get worldwide known? He wouldn't be. However, if it's today, in today's age, where something can happen all the way in Japan, and people in Mexico, uh, in Florida, in Kansas, or wherever, can find out within about three seconds later, because of this freaking technology that we have, that'll be the best time to do such. If something can happen around the world and you can find out find out it happened on the opposite side of the planet within the same day, that's the best time for the most high to send the prophet Elijah to redeem the scattered tribes of Israel. He's gonna get media attention. The media is going to be a vessel. Social media is going to be a vessel. Internet is going to be a vessel. Television is going to be a vessel. Israelites all over the planet will listen to Elijah the prophet. And I'll wake the remnant up completely. Now, Elijah the prophet is not going to wake all the Israelites up. But he's going to get that remnant in check. Pay attention to the stars of heaven. Pay attention to all the constellations. Pay attention to the luminaries because this is the kind of stuff that's going to happen right before. This is a sign of the heaven. Right before 
the Most High destroys the place. It says, For the stars of heaven and the constellations shall not give their light, and the sun shall be darkened, and the going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Everything's going to be dark. It's going to be dark. It's going to be dark day. That's the day of the Most High's wrath. It's not going to happen, you know, it's not going to be we wake up in, in regular captivity life and the Most High is just destroying the place. That's not what's going to happen. We're not just going to be going to school and work and, and living a regular life and the Most High just out of nowhere starts burning the place. The Most High is going to give us many signs. It's all going to be a domino effect. We're going to be able to know what's going to happen and when it happens if we read Torah. Scripture says, Jacob's trouble is the worst day imaginable. And it also says the day of the Most High is the worst day imaginable. So they have to be linked. They have to be linked. I believe they're linked. So, yeah. It's going to be so much destruction. The human mind cannot simply fan them right now. You have to actually be there to experience it. Right before Israel can officially leave captivity and go into the wilderness of the people and, the, and make and embark in the new journey of the Exodus, this has to happen. Jeremiah 30 and 7, at last for the day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in a day, saith Yah of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off his neck and will burst thy bonds. And strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. So it says, in that day of Jacob's trouble, the Most High will break our bonds. That means we will not be in captivity no more. The remnant of Israel who, who the Most High chooses to save, we are going to be out. We are going to be saved out of this stuff. And but the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be great. It says, no day is like that. In fact, look what verse 6 says. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore thou see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all the faces are turned into paleness. Jeremiah 30 and 6 says, every man is in pain like he's giving birth. In scripture, the day of the Most High's wrath and Jacob's trouble is compared to a woman giving birth, a woman travailing, a woman in labor, full of pain. Why? Because Jacob's trouble is the very worst part of our captivity. Jacob's trouble will be worse than slavery. I just want you to know that. Jacob's trouble will be worse than slavery. Uh, just like the actual labor is the worst part of a pregnancy. And it's at the very end. And a woman cannot give birth. The baby cannot be free. The baby cannot have his bonds broken unless there's pain. There has to be great pain right before that happens. Right before that moment. There has to be extreme pain pain right before Israel is broken free officially there has to be extreme pain and suffering but the Israelites who's already worshiping the most high you don't have anything to worry about and that's why it's important to teach as many people as we can about this Isaiah 13 and 14 happens and it shall be as the chaste roe and as the sheep that, that no man taketh up they shall every man flee. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee to his own land. Specifically, Israel shall flee to their own land. This is some crazy stuff, man. Some crazy stuff going to go down. Everyone that's found shall be thrust through. Everyone that's joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Why is it important that everybody flees to their own land, specifically the Israelites? Because the, the Israelites who are still joined with the heathen, that's what it's saying. Israelites who are still joined with the heathen, doing the heathen tradition, what does it say? Shall be 
thrust through and fall by the sword. Their children also should be dashed into pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives shall be ravished. The same exact thing is inscribed in Isaiah 13 and 4. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Yah of hosts, Yah of hosts mustereth the host of battle. This is the Most High's host. This is his angels that we're talking about. They shall come from a far country. From the end of heaven, from the end of heaven, this is the realm, the heavenly realm, this is where they come from. Even Yah and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. All these prophets are saying the same thing, but just different, you know, words, different wording. Uh, Daniel 12 and 1. And at the time shall Michael stand up, the great prince was standard for the children of thy people. This is Michael the archangel, the leader of all angels of war. He will be leading these angels. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time. At that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that should be found written in the book. That's Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble deals with angels. Remember, where in Jeremiah 30 and 7 it says our bonds will be broken, right? In Jacob's trouble, right? Our bonds being broken is the same thing as us being delivered. It says at this time of Michael, when Michael comes, we'll be delivered. This this does indicate that the day of the Most High's wrath, the day of the angels, the day of all this stuff happening is the same time of Jacob's trouble. When stuff starts getting bad for Israel and blah, 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 you can't just jump and say, oh, we're in Jacob's trouble. It's Jacob's trouble when, for one, it starts getting dark. You can't see the sun, moon, and stars. For two, the earth starts shaking. For three, angels are coming and killing people. That's Jacob's trouble. That's Jacob's trouble. Everyone that is found with the heathen shall be thrust through. If you're not with, if you're not rocking with y'all only people, you're going to die. There's enormous detail in Jeremiah 25 and 33. And slain of Yah shall be at that day from one end of the earth unto the other end of the earth. Why is it why is every scripture saying in that day, in that day, in that day? Because these prophets are saying that the most high is gonna do all of this destruction in one day. If the most high took six days to create the earth. Surely he can take one day to destroy all the people. Most high is gonna speed everything up. It's gonna be the worst day in all existence. It is. It says, They shall not be lamented, neither gathered or buried. They shall be as dung upon the ground. They will be doo doo, man. I'm sorry to tell you people this, but this is going to be your cousins. This is going to be your friends. This is going to be some of your family members, some of your teachers, some of your co-workers. This might even be some of your parents, some of your children. This is a lot of people, a lot of people who don't want to turn to the most high. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. Prepare for the worst. This might even be you watching this video. I don't know if everybody watches this video truly with the most high or not. But it might even be you. Man. Hopefully it's not. I hope all my viewers are trying to keep the commandments to the best of their ability. And I hope none of you guys are slacking around. Uh, yeah. I hope, I hope you guys are not still eating pork. I hope you guys are not still worshiping idols. Hope you guys are not still hitting strip clubs. Hope you guys are not doing none of that. Turn to the most high, man. Like, it's, the time is drawing near.
I mean, it's going to get real crazy. For y'all will come with fire and chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger and his fury with rebuke and flames of fire. For by fire and with his sword shall y'all plead with all flesh. And the slain of Yah shall be many, and they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, saying, if you're going to be like Adam and Eve in the garden, and do exactly the opposite of what the Most High says, comma, by eating swine's flesh and the abomination in the mouse shall be consumed together, saith Yah, eating swine's flesh, all you pork lovers, all you bacon eaters, all you uh, pork chops, chitlins, pig feet or whatever if you like that stuff get ready to be burned get ready to be pork you're gonna be pork you eat you are what you eat most high is gonna grill you like you grill your pork so just know that and the abomination and the mouse you got people in china eating bats and rats and all kinds of cats and and cats and hats and all kinds of stuff you know what i'm saying all they gonna die they all gonna die all these people gonna die man then that's when this happens, when the remnant is, is woke completely up. The Most High decides he can deal with us. The Most High says in Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 35, I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Now, what does that mean? You got to think. The wilderness of the people. What does that mean? Why is it not like the regular wilderness? What does that mean, bringing us to the wilderness of the people? Why is it different from bringing us through the wilderness of the desert? What I think, personally, why I say the wilderness of the people, that's where the people used to live, the cities. We will be passing through cities that are now, you know, desolate. It says, I'll bring you into the wilderness of the people and there I will plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith Yah Elohim. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. What does that mean he's going to pass us under the rod? The Most High is going to chastise us. Most High is going to bring us through all kinds of affliction to test us, to see if we're really about his business. Verse 38, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they will not enter into the land of Israel. You will know that I am Yah. So even the remnant who got to make it into this exodus, who who knew y'all and did his commandments, even people out of them, even a fraction of them will die in the wilderness. Because when the Most High passed us under the rod and put us under that test, a lot of us are gonna die. Even the, the fraction of Israelites who, who worship y'all are gonna be cut off. You gotta be really, really strong in this truth, Israel. Stuff is going to happen. Stuff is going to happen. It's going to go down. And meanwhile, the Israelites who the Most High is pleading with, it says, They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to Yah in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. See, the Israelites, the other Israelites who were joined to the heathen, they were thrust through and fell by the sword. But the Israelites who the Most High is dealing with in this exodus, in this wilderness of the people, they're asking the way to Zion. They're saying, let us join ourselves to Yah in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. They're asking the way to Zion. Why would they ask, where is Zion? Why, why, why would they have to ask where their land is? Because it's, it's a common fact now that we've been lied to where our land is. Where our city is. Where Jerusalem is specifically. Specifically Jerusalem is the most hidden area. 
I mean, it's not in our faces. The most I said, it will be completely desolated. Zechariah 10 and verse 10. This is why we're looking for the land of Zion, right? This is why we're at. This is happening when we are asking the way to Zion, trying to make a perpetual covenant with the Most High. Zechariah 10 and 10. And I will bring them also out of the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria and bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon and a place shall not be found for them. That's how Exodus is going to look. We're going to become those who are already in the continental land who haven't been scattered. Uh, you know, a lot of us are in the Caribbean. A lot of us are in Africa. A lot of us are in Mexico, South America, etc. You know, the Most High is going to gather us in one specific area. But specifically in this scripture, it's talking about Egypt and Assyria. Egypt being the southwesternmost area of the U.S. and Assyria being the southeasternmost area of the U.S. The areas where the most Israelites live in the, in the U.S. Uh, they will come out of these lands. And their exodus route, it says they'll pass through Gilead and Lebanon. They'll be... We're, we're going to be like literally leaving all kinds of urban civilization possible. Okay, we're going to be passing through the mountains and the trees. Gilead in Hebrew means rocky region. Okay, now Gilead is known for, uh, also known as the mountains of Gilead or Mount Gilead, right? The rocky mountains of Gilead, specifically speaking. Um, we're going to be passing through the Rockies, man. We're going to be passing through the Rocky Mountains. We're going to be passing through Lebanon. Lebanon, the, the region of the White Mountains, the burning trees, the tall trees, right? This is the Northern California. We're going to be passing through all this region. But it says no place shall be found for us. Because this is dense wooded area we're in. We're trying to find place. We're trying to find civilization. We've got to build our own. It's not. We're not going to find any cities. Because what happened what happened in the first Exodus? What happened in the first Exodus? We went into a land, we went into Canaan, and we took their houses and we lived in, in the Canaanites' houses. We, we can't do that this time. We can't just go into Canaan and live in, in the white folks' houses. Who live up. And you know them rich white people who live in, in Northern California in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, who like to ski and all that stuff there. All that's going to be destroyed. It's going to be burnt up. It's going to be burnt up by the time we go into that land. Remember what Ezekiel 20 and 47, it said the fire shall go from the south to the north. Okay. You know, the fire is not always going to stay in South America. Fires are not always going to stay in Africa. The fires are not always going to stay in Australia. The fires are going to go from the south to the north, according to scriptures. And guess what? We already know California is already on fire and it catches fire easily. But watch what's going to happen next. It's going to be freaking Colorado. It's going to be Utah. It's going to be all kinds of stuff. Uh, unexpected stuff. When you study Agenda 2030, you'll figure out that the... Uh, westernmost region of the United States is a region where they don't want people to live in. They don't want people to live in there. They're trying to get people out of there, out of that whole region. I wonder why. Some crazy stuff is going to come to that area. All that's going to be burnt up. We're looking at fires in Colorado. We're looking at fires in Utah. We're looking at fires in Idaho. We're looking at fires in California. That whole area is going to be burnt up. That's why scripture said we won't find any place. And the, and the Gentile counterparts that's with us, our servants, will build a place up for us. The eyes of Yah Elohim are upon this sinful kingdom. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. Saith Yah, just like the Most High will save 
Just like the Most High will bring Jacob's trouble and bring the day of the Most High's wrath, we will save Israel out of it. Yes. Verse 9 it says, For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among the nations, as corn is sifted in a sieve. Yet I will not the least grain fall upon the earth. That word corn in this context, not in every context, but in this specific context, corn should say wheat here. Okay, not, not in every context. I repeat, don't 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 think I'm saying in every scripture where there's corn, it should be wheat because I already disproved that in Migration Series 3. But in this specific scripture here, corn should say wheat. Okay. And if you know anything about sifting wheat, wheat has husk, wheat has uh, chaff, it has all kinds of stuff that you need to get out of it, okay? But the, it said the grain shall not fall to earth, but the shaft and the dust and all the other stuff is going to fall to the earth. The shaft and the dust, that's the sinful Israelites. That's the Israelites we don't want in our land. We're going to get rid of them. That's how the Most High is going to get rid of these Israelites who are no good, but the righteous ones will stay at the top and make it to the make it to the Most High's land. Zechariah chapter thirteen verse eight, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yah, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried, and they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, Yah is my Elohim. So the Most High said, Two thirds of Israel shall die, and one part, one part will be the remnant, but not all of that remnant will make it to the land, because out of that remnant, even out of that remnant, he's going to try us as gold. He's going to try us as silver. He's going to get all. If you know anything about mining gold or silver, they come with aluminum and all kinds of other trace elements and dirt and brass. And you got to burn it to separate everything out. You have to melt it to separate everything out of it. That's what he's going to do to us. He's going to put us through numerous tests. Scripture says he's going to pass us through the rod, pass us under the rod. To get all of the wicked Israelites out of us. That one third of Israelites who make it, who don't die in the Most High's wrath, are still going to be tried in the wilderness. And one third out of that one third is going to live in the kingdom. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. It shall come to pass in that day that Yah shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Now, most High is going to deliver Israel from all these lands, but I want to I want to talk about geography for just a minute because um, I don't know why, but scholars want you to believe that every every land that I mention is in the Middle East or Africa, right? The Middle East or Africa. So you mean to tell me today all Israelites are in the Middle East or Africa? No. The first place it mentioned is Syria, southeastern area of the United States. That's Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, etc. From Egypt. That's Texas, Louisiana, part of Mississippi, Arizona, New Mexico. 
from Pathros, that's northern Mexico. Well, Pathros is part of Egypt, so yes, northern Mexico. And from Kush, southern Mexico, California, South America, and, and Western Africa. Because Kush is all the Ethiopian nations, not just one Ethiopian nation. But Shinar, that's the area around the Appalachian Mountains, and Hamath. That's also in California. These are areas where Israelites live. Also the islands of the sea, the Caribbeans, uh, inclu including the Isles of the Gentiles, Great Britain, Ireland, all that area right there. Israelites, all oh, that's Israelites. The UK, Spain, the Isles of the Gentiles, man. All oh, that's Israelites. And from all these lands, from England, from Ireland, from Spain, from Jamaica, from Haiti, from Puerto Rico, from Mexico, from Brazil, from, from Georgia, from Florida, from South Carolina, North Carolina, from New York, from, from Texas, from Louisiana, from all these places you can think of. Canada. All these places. Israelites live. And they will return to the land. With all this murder and all this blood, and with all this killing, and slain, and purge, the Most High said, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man more. E even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Why is a man more precious than fine gold? Why is mankind <laughs> more precious than the golden wedge of Ophir? Because you gotta understand, gold is only precious, gold is only valuable because it's rare. If every rock on planet Earth was made out of gold, gold wouldn't be worth anything. However, since gold is hard to find and it's hard to produce, it's freaking valuable as crap. You feel me? So, all this purge and all this slaying, man will be so hard to find, man. It'll be precious. More than gold. It'll be harder to find. You, you'll you find a wedge of gold easier than you'll be able to find a man. That's how many people are going to die. Isaiah 14 and 1. For y'all will have mercy on Jacob, and he will choose Israel and set them in their own land, and strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So Israel's entering into their land. And strangers with them. Strangers who keep the Most High's commandments. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Why will the stranger bring them to our place? Why will the strangers bring us to our place? Because they know our land more than we know our land. Who's living in our land right now? It doesn't matter where you think the, our land is. The answer is white people. They dwell in the tents of Shem. Japheth dwell in the tent of Shem. These strangers will bring us to our land. They know the land more than we know the land. It says, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yah. In this land, however, we will possess these people. For servants and handmaids, and they shall take them as captives, whose captives they were. We were at one time your captives, but now you're my captive. It's been reversed. And they shall rule over their oppressors. These people who oppressed us at one point, we shall rule over them. And that's when this happens. It's Isaiah 65 and 17. For behold, I will create new heavens and new earth, 
and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. When we go back into our land and the Most High is going to be with us again, everything is going to be new. Everything is going to be new. It's going to be a whole different place. It's going to be a completely different place. But look at this. It says, the former shall not even come to mind. Our minds will be completely changed. We would not be able to think about the old world. We wouldn't be able to think about the sin that people used to commit. We wouldn't be able to think about the oppression that we were under. That's why it would be so natural for us to rule over our oppressors. We, we wouldn't even be able to think about our family members and our friends dying. That wouldn't be on our minds. So don't worry about the stress and the, and the fear that you... That you might feel because, I mean, we all love our people. We all love our family. We all love our friends. But if they don't want to understand the most highest commandments, if you try to tell them that they should do something and they just refuse to do it, just got to let them go, man. Just got to let them go. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the day is come, saith y'all. That I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I have made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, saith Yah. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yah, I will put my law in their inward parts. And write them in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The Most High says, when he makes a new heaven and a new earth, and we're in our land, we're settled down, we got our little servants or whatever, we're going to have a new covenant. And the Most High says our minds will be completely changed. We wouldn't even be able to think about the former world anymore. That's when he will write the law, that he will write his Torah on our heart. On our heart means on our mind. Our minds are going to be consisted of the most holiest dimensional things ever. There wouldn't be any worrying or fear in our minds. There wouldn't be any more stress. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to afford health care? How am I going to do this? Because the only thing that we're going to need is Torah. Our bodies are going to be perfect. Everything's going to be perfect. It's not even going to be the same kind of world. A lot of the stuff I talked about earlier was terrible. But this is really good. Good is really going to come. It'll be a very peaceful place, a very healthy environment. Say so he'll write them in our inward parts. <laughs>